you should probably expect spoilers. She's an outspoken little madam with no time for the common people. So me and her are gonna get along just fine, innit? Who that? It's Karen. Let me start by throwing you lot a question. Out of Ken Masters, M. Bison, and Goldilocks here, who would you say is the most wealthiest? If you said the Bashonen or Bossman, then you've just lost that grand prize trip to Hawaii because it's this schoolgirl who is paper stacking. Karen Kanzuki was born into an extremely wealthy family, so wealthy in fact that the Kanzuki Corporation far outrank M. Bison's own Shadaloo organization. This is legit by the way, it is stated that Shadaloo have tried to approach the Kanzukis numerous times in a bid to acquire their assets but to no avail, and whenever they try to obtain assets by force, the Kanzuki Corporation have kept them at bay. We are talking about M. Bison here, a guy who we discovered in the Charlie Nash episode to be so powerful, he has members of the US military under his control, and yet the Kanzukis are something that he cannot touch. That's some top tier mafia level shit. The Kanzuki family is so rich in fact that their estate covers 200 miles of land. 200 miles? 200 miles, you know, let me break it down for you what 200 miles is, alright? I come from the country called the United Kingdom, and here we have a city called London. I'm from there, you might have heard of it. Now way up north of the country, there's a city called Liverpool. Now I don't go to Liverpool very often, if at all. Do you want to know why that is? Because it's 200 fucking miles away! Okay, so we've established that Karen's family is insanely wealthy, but what about Karen herself? What's her story? Well, the family's motto is to be the best in everything. Victory is all that matters. And Karen was raised with this motto being a key factor into her upbringing. Because of this, Karen strives to be the best in everything she does, no matter how little the task may be. She is trained in the family's fighting style of Kanzuki Ryu, so she's also an adept fighter too. Because of her interest in martial arts, she was destined to eventually encounter Sakura, another schoolgirl who also dabbles in martial arts. Being the overconfident little lady that she is, Karen challenges Sakura to a fight and has high expectations of being the victor. Because, you know, that family motto of hers, eh. So it totally blew her mind when she lost. Wanting to redeem herself and live up to her family tradition of being anything but a loser, she sets out to find Sakura for a rematch. Karen eventually finds Sakura and they have their rematch, which Karen wins. However, even though Karen was victorious, her mind feels refreshed on the whole situation and admits that Sakura is indeed the better fighter out of them both. In fact, Karen has been so awakened by her little journey that she now feels it's not purely about being victorious, but the passion within the fight that matters most. She still strives for victory as anybody in a competitive circuit should do, but not always being victorious allows one to learn new things. And thus, a new breeze began to blow in the Kanzuki family. Also, I'm not sure how canon this is, but her ending in Alpha 3 shows that the wealth of her family even reaches to the depths of space. The Kanzukis own a satellite and use it to fire a laser at the Shadaloo base, destroying it completely. Yeah, I doubt that ended up as canon. Imagine if it was though, eh? And Bison finally defeated by a pink laser shaped like a cock. What a way to go. Visual design. Fun fact for those of you that are new to Karen, she is one of the rare few characters in the series whose origins began outside the video game continuity. Karen started off as a character in a Street Fighter manga called Sakura Ganbaru, which follows the story of Blanca. No, I'm kidding, it's obviously about a schoolgirl, isn't it? In this short manga series, Karen is more or less the same, coming from a rich family and being a rival to Sakura. Capcom liked the character so much that they wanted to incorporate Karen and elements of her story into the Street Fighter series. After a few minor design changes, Karen made her official video game debut in Street Fighter Alpha 3. 
Interesting, right? Well, hold on to your butt cheeks because I'm about to get my DYKG flex on and spit some lyrical trivia for you fine people. Did you know? Despite Karen's official video game debut being in 1998's Street Fighter Alpha 3, it seems Capcom might have planned to use the character a whole year earlier in their crossover title, Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter. Sprite data for Karen can be found in the game's ROM and sync up to one of Sakura's colour palettes. Because of this, it is speculated Karen might have been just a palette swap of Sakura instead of being a fully functioning standalone character. Big shout out to Rage Critter for the info and Ragey for this animated gif, and remember to subscribe to Did You Know Valentine for more of my crap. Karen's outfit is a sharp red sailor schoolgirl uniform with white accents. To keep things a little more different from Sakura's attire, Karen wears black shorts underneath her skirt and also comes clack clack clacking down the street in her little red boots. She accompanies all of this with a blue tie and matching blue bow for her hair. She's also got that I'm from the posh side of town hairstyle too, showcasing Victorian-esque curls with braids circulating around the sides. Now, all things considered, Karen looks good. I do like the hairstyle and I especially love the fact that she's wearing black bicycle shorts underneath her skirt instead of straight up pantsu, which is a very typical trope that is normally connected to this type of outfit. But can I just be honest about one thing here? I'm personally not feeling the Sailor Schoolgirl look anymore. Well, there goes all my hentai privileges. I do recognise I'm not being fair to Karen by saying this. Her appearance does come from the 1990s after all, and as much as I love that decade, back then, if your product didn't have a Japanese schoolgirl rocking a Sailor outfit, <laughs> oh shit boy, what are you doing, huh? It's an outfit that I felt was so overdone that I just kinda became indifferent to that style. I know there's probably a bunch of people out there right now watching this who still love this look and if you do then good for you, go do your thing, I ain't judging anybody. I'm just saying for me personally, it's a little played out now. Does it mean I dislike Karen's design? No, I like Karen, but I just wanted to see her wear something more fitting to her personality and level of class. So when I saw Karin's Street Fighter V design, I was like, yes rude girl, now we're officially in the building. Karin's new look is flawless, but I'm going to be talking about that another time. Personality. If you had asked me what I thought of Karin about three months ago, then I would have told you that she was an utterly rude bitch. See, Karen is not a character I've spent a lot of time with in the past. I did own Street Fighter Alpha 3 for the Sega Dreamcast back in the day, but rarely played it since I was too busy fapping over Third Strike. And Marvel vs Capcom 2. Oh, and Soul Calibur. Sorry. Because of these other distractions, I knew of Karen, but I didn't really know her, you know what I mean? The most I had gotten to know of Karen had been during Udon's own take of the Street Fighter universe. A graphic novel centred around Sakura was released by Udon in which Karen appears as an antagonist. During that line of continuity, she is rude, pushy and incredibly obnoxious. She will do anything to win, she will cheat her way to victory and she doesn't play fair. She was a dishonourable cow and quite frankly, I wasn't feeling her. After reading that graphic novel, I went many years thinking that this is what Karen was like. This was her personality. And you want to know something? As it turns out, I was completely wrong. See, I love the comic company Udon. They do great work and I will always be a fan. But once I sat down to start working on the Rainbow Mika episode, as I began filtering through some of Karin's footage from Alpha 3, it showed me a character I had completely misunderstood all this time, mainly in part due to Udon's portrayal of her. This is an example of why for Huda I will only ever focus on versions of a character from their mainline continuity, because their alternative versions are sometimes created with certain liberties taken to them and they've ended up changing from what they're originally meant to be. So, what is Karin really like? Well, she definitely still has a rudeness to her, that much is true, but that's where the similarities end. Karen is proud. She believes she has a right to be victorious because her family motto has taught her to be precisely that and she will speak down to whomever she deems less than her. But she is not without a high level of understanding too. She is not ignorant and she shows a kind and compassionate side numerous times. 
For example, Karin mocks Rainbow Mika based on her choice of fighting style, but right after the fight, Karin learns from Mika just how exciting and powerful wrestling can be. Karin is so impressed that she offers to sponsor Mika's wrestling career. Another example that surprised me the most was seeing Karin catch up to Sakura and them having their fight, to which Karin wins, but recognises Sakura as the better fighter. She directly tells this to Sakura too, it's not some daydream or some passing thought, it's not even a monologuing to herself, no. Karin finishes her fight with Sakura and says, Yeah, I won, but you know what though? You're definitely better than I am. I respect you, keep kicking ass. If we are going to say Karen is rude, then sure, but it's her proudness that won't allow her to bow down to you unless you prove to her what you're about. This personality trait means Karen still remains as the rude girl we expect her to be, but she has heart and she isn't as obnoxious to the world around her as I'd initially thought. Honestly, from making this and the Rainbow Mika episode, I realised I had gotten Karen so incredibly misunderstood up until now, and learning the character over from scratch became somewhat of an eye-opening experience for me. I love a strong personality that is sure of itself, confident and determined, but will step back and salute others who are just as strong. Karen may be a rude girl, but she's definitely in tune with her heart and soul. Yeah, she sounds like an R&B singer. Rainbow Mika is one of the characters that Karen is directly important to. The Kanzuki Corporation is the company sponsoring Rainbow Mika's professional wrestling career due to Karen making that offer and sticking to it. I like this bond more so from knowing that the reason it happened at all was because Karen lost to Mika in their fight and from it she gained a level of respect towards Mika. Needless to say, but Sakura is also another character that Karen is important to, offering her a rivalry that initially began as Karen just throwing her sass around, but ended up blossoming into a much friendlier rivalry when Karen recognised Sakura as the better fighter. As odd as it seems, we have to acknowledge the fact that Karin holds a connection to M. Bison too, seeing as Shadaloo want to acquire the Kanzuki Corporation but fail to do so, meaning that for all the power M. Bison throws around, it goes to show that against the Kanzukis, Shadaloo are not entirely top dog, and in turn this gives a wealth of importance back to Karin. To the series overall, I would say based on just her one major appearance so far, Karin holds quite a reputation within the series. Being the main face of the Kanzuki family means Karin is instantly associated with wealth and power, one that is almost untouchable by this continuity standards, but now it does raise a little question. If Shadaloo see the Kanzuki Corporation as something important, do the Illuminati also have Karin and her family in their sights? In the Street Fighter 3 series, the Illuminati's objectives range from radical things such as abductions and cloning projects, to something as petty as stealing some dude's car, so their goals seem to be unpredictable and varied. Do the Illuminati have the Kanzukis on their radar now too? It seems with Karin being in Street Fighter V and Urien from the Illuminati set to be a DLC character in the future, both organisations will be present in the same game for the first time. If the Illuminati deemed the Kanzuki Corporation something worthy of their attention, then Karen's importance within the series is definitely going to skyrocket. Conclusion. I guess I'm late to the party with Karen. I had misunderstood this character for many years because I only looked into a non-canon version of her, and honestly that was my own fault really. If I hadn't have spent time researching her mainline video game continuity and getting to know her more for this episode, then my ignorance would have continued and that would have been a damn shame. I honestly did a complete 180 on her when I realised how different her personality was. Being a bit rude and throwing a little attitude around can be fun from a viewer's perspective, but it's also somewhat heartwarming when a character of this proud nature tends to ease off a little and show they have compassion by noticing the world isn't just about them. Karen recognising Sakura as the better fighter won points from me because these are levels of mutual respect and honour that I appreciate the most. I like a character that has this aspect about them, I just never expected it to come from Karen of all characters, but I'm glad it has, and now I see her in a much better light because of it. If you're new to the character like I am, then you need to look beyond the posh tart exterior to find out what really makes her work, but it's definitely worth it. On that note, if you're already a fan of her, then I can kind of see where you're coming from in regards to Karen. What do you mean it's pronounced as Kareen? Now what do you mean it's pronounced as Kareen? I am not starting over again!